Uh, good morning. You're on the hotline. Uh, this is John Bruner calling in. We had some technical difficulties. We sure did, John. It, it, I'm, I'm glad that glad you did call back in. Um, don't know whether we had, had disconnected you somehow or, or whether uh, you got disconnected at your end. But anyway, we're, you're on, and we're, we're glad to have you here. We are on the air uh, now, and, uh, and it's uh, good to have a chance to talk with you. The last time that uh, folks here in St. Joseph got a a good chance to hear what you had to say was in the debate that we had uh, early in May uh, here and I'd like you to bring us up to date on your campaign uh, since then. Well we had a wonderful time there in St. Joe and the uh, Chamber of Commerce and all the fine folks in the area really put on a, a great uh, opportunity for us to continue to talk about the real issues that are going on here in Missouri and around the country and uh, since that period of time uh, the campaign has continued to travel across Missouri and now that we are eight points ahead in our polling here uh, from our uh, Republican uh, primary opponents. And, of course, uh, we're ahead of uh, Senator Claire McCaskill. So we still have a, just under two months to go, but it's very, very positive. And the message of getting America working again, getting Missouri working again, getting a citizen senator up here to represent the, the folks in Missouri as opposed to career politicians is resonating with everybody. Talk about what you are hearing from the voters. Well, the, the, as I've gone across the, the, the state many times, it's the same things that I've experienced in my manufacturing business. Uh, I was in the, um, making personal care products for over 33 years, and the regulatory environment is just choking everyone. People are hunkering down, the indecision, uh, the cost of, of continuing to meet new and newer regulations that are rolling on top of everybody's back. They're just saying, hey, John, if we can just get big government and get the EPA and get these incessant red tape regulations off our back, we can start working again. Whether it's uh, agriculture, retail, manufacturing, you know, Americans love to work. They love to produce. They love to have acreage to their farms. Uh, we all have this innate sense of optimism. But when you have a federal government that continues to throw regulation upon regulation on top of the backs of people that are trying to create the jobs, you know, it puts everything on hold. And in many cases, uh, a number of folks have decided to sell out, shut down, because they're worried that with this type of uh, regulatory environment, they won't be able to survive next year. So, number one, let's get these red tape regulations off the backs of Missourians and Americans and allow us to get back working again. Do you think that uh, that, that and a, a change in the tax code are necessary to to get the economy going again? Well, I'm I'm a hundred percent behind this here. I've seen this. I've, I'm I'm the only candidate who's actually done budgets for 33 years and, and grown a business. And we've seen all the ups and downs of, of the economy uh, over that period of time. And you're exactly right. Uh, I have a four point focus here that I know we can get uh, jobs working again and get America growing again. And yes, you're right. I have a fair, flatter tax code. We're now the highest in, in the world. And people do not invest where there's a high cost of goods. Oh, each of us as individuals, as uh, uh, shoppers, we, if, if there's a price of gas is a few pennies less across the street, we go spend a few pennies less. We don't go and invest in those areas where or purchase those products that have higher costs when you have cheaper alternatives. And the third area, which is really just absolutely incredible common sense is to have a, our own domestic energy policy. We know that when you increase the supply of something, the costs go down, the stability of, of, those, of those prices are, are in, in, engaged here in terms of ensuring that we have a steady supply of energy. We have plenty of oil. We have plenty of natural gas. Uh, we have incredible natural resources here that we can tap into if we just get the EPA to back off and some of these government regulators to back off. We know that with lower energy costs that our agricultural products are less expensive and more competitive in world markets. We know that manufacturing will come back to America because we have the lowest uh, energy prices. So between energy, red tape regulations, fair flatter tax, and then the fourth area is to have comprehensive tort reform. Because if for some reason you've survived the first three, there's always those frivolous lawsuits that are on the backs of, of those that are working hard to produce the jobs and to get the economy growing again. I'm absolutely convinced. I've seen it firsthand in my, in my own business and other business owners as I've talked to folks across Missouri and farmers and retailers. 
Jesus. John, we can do it. We can get America working again. Let's just pull back on these red tape regulations, get the tax rate competitive again, get tort reform, and for crying out loud, let's get us a, a great energy policy. We're, we're standing on tremendous resources here. Just open up the, the pipelines and the gas lines, and we're going to find ourselves uh, booming again as an economy. Talk a little bit more about the about the tax code and about your ideas for having a flatter tax are you looking at a one rate tax code two rates three rates what what do you have in mind well right now we know that the problem with the tax code is there's over ninety thousand pages of of regulations to follow and over eighty percent of americans have to use some outside organization to help fill their taxes I mean, it's complicated, and the perception of unfairness exists for special carve-outs and issues there. So I believe that you can bring these rates down lower by, by what I'd say, a fair, flatter rate. I, you know, whether it's a, a couple levels, two or three levels, uh, we haven't really zeroed in on that area. There's a number of, of good proposals that have been presented that get us going in that direction. And we have uh, wonderful proposals from... Uh, Senator Ron Johnson, uh, Pat Toomey, uh, Tom Coburn, uh, others who've come forward with how do we get this to make it fair, flatter, easier to fill out your taxes. And uh, I believe Americans, we all would appreciate that. And uh, we'll have a, a better, fairer system going forward, and we'll be more competitive. And uh, we'll get the politics out of the tax code, and that's the problem. You, you get their special interests one year, and then they're pulled out and the next year, and new interests are, are, are brought in forward. So all we need to do is get it fair, flatter, simpler, and we'll have a code that everyone understands and cut out those 90,000 pages of regulations. It's just absolutely insane. So, you know, I've, I've found over the years that it sometimes takes a lot of effort to simplify things. It doesn't take much effort to make things complicated. And we've made things so complicated for ourselves in this tax code that it's almost impossible to understand exactly what we need to do here in terms of going forward. But we've got a lot of good minds, a lot of good people We are moving in this direction. We understand that moving that direction will get us to where we need to get to, to be competitive again, not only in the U.S., but on world markets. And uh, when our, our business taxes now are the highest in the world, uh, it, it's a world market. And it's just a higher cost. We have higher cost in terms of the regulatory environment. You know, that's costing us over a trillion dollars a year. A tax code is costing us trillions over the year. Not having energy policy that can lower the cost of energy. You know, before you know it, you add a trillion here, a trillion there. <laughs> and you bring this back here to our goods and services that we as Americans can produce. We'll be very, very competitive. And, and instead of it having high unemployment, we'll be looking for good people and good employees and good associates to fill these jobs. Got some callers on the line. Let's go to the phones. Good morning. You're on the hotline with John Brunner. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I was just wondering, Mr. Brunner, your stand on the uh, all subsidies. I know. Were you able to hear the question, John? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. In terms of oil subsidies, and this is, this goes back to the tax code here, because what we have are, are special carve-outs or special industries. Whatever's available for one industry should be available for all industries. And, and here's the problem, is that there are constantly changing uh, 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 rates in these tax codes, constantly changing regulations. we got to get it fair or flatter. Whatever we can do to get the tax rates fair and flatter, it'll be a lot better to understand, it'll be accepted, and we'll be more competitive again. But right now, uh, this is where government should get out of the business of carving out special carve-outs and have a fair, flatter tax code that all businesses can be made, made available and will be competitive and let the free market decide uh, what people want to purchase and not purchase. But right now, we, we have a rate that's way too high, and it's uh, we have a high cost of energy. And, of course, we all remember back uh, in the Carter administration when uh, he decided that we needed to start the Department of Energy because we were 30% dependent on foreign oil. You know, now today, we're 70% dependent on foreign oil. After spending trillions of dollars, we're going in the wrong direction. You know, I'm a very basic, fundamental, free enterprise kind of person that has seen it work firsthand. Because in our products, in our categories, in competition, uh, brings a couple great things. It 
drives the cost lower, improves the quality, and improves the service. And I've seen this happen over and over and over again. We have to get people in Washington, D.C., not the career politicians, but people who've had actual years of experience in business to get this done. People who've had experience in manufacturing. Right now, we have one manufacturer in the U.S. Senate, and that's Ron Johnson. And uh, he came in with 31 years of experience. He understands budgets. He understands the tax codes. He understands the issue with energy. He, he had a, a, a company that used a tremendous amount of energy. So right now, we need a deeper bench strength up in Washington, D.C., and we need to get more manufacturers, uh, more business people up there that understand these basic fundamentals to drive business. America needs to grow again. America has lost its market share over the last 10 years. And we know we can reverse that with good, solid policies and good, solid uh, uh, business sense ideas here to get us growing again. We'll have more with, uh, with John Brunner and more of your questions, your comments, and your calls for him just ahead. One thing I've learned on my journey to help save people money on car insurance is that folks across the country like convenience. And what could be more convenient than visiting Geico.com? We can manage your policy, pay your bill online, just about anything you need. And it's open 24-7. It's kind of like popping into the ultimate convenience store. Except we save people money. And we don't have beef jerky. For a free rate quote, visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We'll take a look here at the uh, at the weather forecast now. This uh, forecast is sponsored by the uh, Bank of Kansas City. Sunny today, the high 98 degrees. It'll be clear tonight, the low 75. Tomorrow, sunny and breezy with a high of 92. On Wednesday, 30% chance of rain, the high 90. Um, that was Wednesday. And then Thursday, partly cloudy with a high of 95. On Friday, partly cloudy, the high 88. Saturday and Sunday, Sunny with highs in the lower 90s. Yesterday's high was 91. Normal high this time of year is 85. And right now, it's 82. Free checking still lives at the Bank of Kansas City. No minimum balance, no monthly fee, no direct deposit required. Bank of Kansas City, long live your money. Member FDIC. Is uh, Senate candidate John Brunner. He's uh, talking to us. I guess you're from, you're in St. Louis today, John? Yes, I am, but uh, we've been crisscrossing this state uh, dozens and dozens of times. It's been absolutely incredible, riveting, wonderful people, uh, hardworking Missourians who um, want to see a better vision, somebody that understands the economy, who's actually been in the economy. And, you know, this is the time for these career politicians to step aside and get somebody who's actually met a payroll, uh, run a business, uh, you know, sat down. We've had those issues with our with our our suppliers. Which bills can you pay today and which ones can you hold off to tomorrow? All the tough issues that you find when you're making product and selling them to every retailer across the country. But we grew this small business from 40 associates to over 1,400 individuals. It was a lot of hard work. But I know it can be done. I've seen it happen. We all know people who've, who've been able to get behind, 
behind the American dream with those good core American principles and get us working again. And that's all they want to do in, in D.C. Is, is bring some common sense back to Washington, D.C. And uh, the, the politicians and, and those who are in there for their career need to step aside and let's get people up there that know what they're doing. One of the four points in your program is energy, one of the four more important points. Uh, why is energy such an important part of our economy? Well, from uh, energy is a very important part of our economy, and every year when we sit down to do our budgets, the first question we would ask is, well, what is the price of oil going to be? Now, we don't know. We're a small manufacturing company here in Missouri, but we understood the impact in terms of transportation, the cost of raw materials, the shipping, everything in terms of the, the whole manufacturing process. And we saw that when oil went up $20 a barrel, it wiped out our profit for the entire year. So the focus on energy was critical. And those times when energy prices would drop, uh, we were that much more effective. We could lower our price to our customers uh, and, and improve our, our sales. And obviously, whenever you can lower your prices, you, you open up new markets and opportunities. So we were focused on, on energy. Now, obviously, in, inside our operation, we have energy-saving policies and issues and, and anything we could possibly do. But the best opportunity we have here is we have multiple sources of energy. And we also have these jobs that we've exported over there to the Middle East and, and the energy that we uh, are, are pulling in from the Middle East. We have not built a refinery here in 25 years, and, 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 and uh, uh, the Chinese have built over 20 of them in the last decade. So let's, let's come back and take care of America. Let's take care of American jobs with American energy. And we've also seen within our own country, if a particular state or region has a lower energy price, that attracts manufacturing. Well, we, if we had a long-term American energy program here, we would find a lot of these manufacturing uh, plants expanding here in the United States as well as coming back from overseas because this is the biggest market. This is the biggest consumer market, and we could have lower cost of everything. I mean, right now we all experience at the pump uh, since Claire McCaskill has uh, joined the U.S. Senate, the gas prices have doubled. We all know we've had to cut back on doing things. I mean, can you imagine if we could get gas down to less than $2 a gallon? What that would open up in terms of opportunities and travel and, and, and money for other things, such as food or, or even putting a, uh, money away for a bit of savings. So we can do it. The thing is, we need people up in Washington, D.C. who care more about jobs, more about getting America working again than their own jobs and their own political careers. Why haven't we been able to build a refinery in this country for nearly 30 years? Well, we've had a, a sense of direction here in terms of increasing regulatory environment that really has, has given not more than a strong suggestion but almost a mandate of not to move forward because you're talking about um, hundreds of millions of dollars of capital investment that takes years to plan for. And if you're looking down the road and you don't see a, a solid energy policy here in America, you're not going to make that investment. But I tell you what's happened in just the last couple months, uh, the EPA... Uh, with the support of President Obama and Claire McCaskill, has come down on our coal industry and basically has shut down, or will have shut down, all the coal industry here in America and Missouri. And Missouri is dependent on, on 71% of their energy from coal. Now, two years ago, Claire McCaskill said she hated coal. Well, now it's an election year. Now she's starting to be a little more friendly. But can you imagine having this, this change and waiver of policy and the EPA coming in and you're looking about investing hundreds of millions of dollars in, 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 in a new coal technology? You know, right now we'll be digging coal and shipping it to China. This is insanity. It really is. And it's taken away the food from our citizens, taken away our savings, and driving the cost of energy up instead of driving the cost down. People say, well, the EPA won't, won't, won't actually shut down the industry, but what it is, it's set a, such a high new standard that if you begin to go in and make any major repairs to any of our coal-fired uh, uh, plants and facilities, they are now put under the new regulation. So this can change. It's easy to change. You get the right kind of senators up there, those who really understand business, understand the economy, understand that Americans want lower prices, not higher prices, we can do it with the right kind of people. If somebody proposed a refinery for Missouri, 
Would you support it? Well, I would, of course, but I don't think it would. Anybody in, in, in the in the energy industry would move forward right now. We can't even get a pipeline coming down from Canada, more or less a refinery. So right now, the issue is is that the regulatory environment is so extreme that we can't do anything. We're kind of on a lockdown here, and if if we're not forward looking in terms of saying what's our vision of America in the future, five years, ten years down the road and how we can improve our, our, our energy prices and costs. Uh, you know, this is, we're not Japan. We have tremendous amount of energy and resources. All we need to do is have some common sense uh, regulations. We, we've seen that, for example, in 1994, regulations were 6% of the GDP. In 2011, it's 11.7% of GDP. That's $855 billion of new regulatory costs. And guess who pays the bill? All of us as consumers and manufacturers and those in agriculture. It doesn't need to be this way. I keep telling folks, we understand it doesn't need to be this way and we have the wherewithal to turn this around. And the best way to do that is to get people in Washington, D.C., bring back the citizen senator, the citizen legislators, those who've actually been working in the private sector where there are real jobs, and bring that private sector experience to Washington, D.C. We have 57 lawyers up there. You know, we have one manufacturer. Um, we need a deeper bench strength if we're going to turn this economy and this country around. We can do it. We have the ability. We have the resources. Uh, we just need to have a, an election coming up here that is going to make some changes to get the right kind of people in Washington, D.C. I volunteered to, to step in. I, I volunteered to, as a uh, serve in the Marines as an infantry platoon commander 37 years ago. I've volunteered to serve in the mission field. I helped to turn around a small family business that was struggling when I got back from the, out of the Marine Corps. And I'm volunteering one more time to get up here and, and do what we can so that we can bring back the American dream for our kids and grandkids, and bring back that that was supposed to be the hope and opportunity that was lost over the last four or five years, and restore that with good common sense regulations and good common sense tax code, common sense energy, common sense tort reform. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna just, just isn't enough common sense up there. <laughs> John, thanks a lot for talking with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate it. And my uh, uh, website is www.johnbruner.com, John, B-R-U-N-N-E-R.com. Look forward to continue to meet the folks across from Missouri, and thank you for this opportunity today. Right. Thank you. John Bruner, your guest on this part of the hotline this morning. Thanks for listening. We'll have more on the hotline coming up. Right now we go to the Ag Info Center and get opening market information from Mary McKenna. Good morning, Mary.